Miscellaneous. RTN correction approaches. RTK, FKP, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, hi, folks. Uh, this is another RTN 101 uh, fiasco. Here. No, um, a little discussion here. So what I want to talk about right now is different ways of getting corrections. When uh, you do an RTK, and people have done RTK for a long time, you got your rover. And let's say it's a single frequency rover. Well, just sitting there by itself without any kind of corrections, you might end up with a uh, error ellipse about yay big. Or, uh, you know, let's say, oh, you post process it or you've got a beacon or something and it's getting a little tighter, but that's single frequency. And why is that? That's because the delays through the ionosphere and troposphere and lots of cool things like that, but a uh, single frequency by itself cannot really mitigate for a lot of that. So you put a dual frequency one there, and one, uh, you know, the code gets delayed going through the ionosphere and the carrier, and comparing the two, that puts about 99% of that delay out of there. But still, you're, you're dealing with an error ellipse that's not all that wonderful. So Brilliant people, very brilliant people, came up with the idea of putting a reference station out there. It also has two frequencies to, to work with. And it's doing its little comparison here, and you're doing your little comparison here with your rover. And then it comes up with a correction between the two. And it, you know, gives you a vector to here. Well, one problem with that is that uh, the farther away you get from that base, it might just, uh, whoop, yep, you probably heard it hit the floor. So the area you got to work with it and all that, and all that wonderful. Then people came up with the idea of network style correction. You have to have very stable reference stations. So uh, trim the bottom of your mushrooms here. The idea of network corrected RTK. Now the, the whole the idea behind this was to be able to extend the baselines uh, between the rover and the and the base because you know it, in the old days it was basically 10 kilometers before what people call the parts per million start creeping up on you well with network real-time um, corrector network based you could extend that a little bit and there were a couple of ideas that came along um, mid 90s to late 90s there were a lot of uh, white papers out there, different folks coming up with correction ideas. One of them was called FKP. It's a German word again. I'm flat something, you know. Uh, anyhow, it, it look it up. Uh, FKP, or is it FPK? So the idea was that you could have uh, a group of stations coming up with a correction and sort of like plot them, well, so to speak, you know, three defining a plane. So the values of the corrections are on this plane which is often tilted. And actually a lot of people call this type of correction the tilt correction. So you, you've got a predefined zone there uh, of corrections being derived from a group of stations. Now this is kind of neat because you could just say well in this group of stations here I'm just going to push that correction out which would be good in that area. And interpolating where you are on this plane you come up with a correction value. Uh, this was uh, originally, you know, launched as a broadcast-only style, and it, uh, you know, that's that's pretty cool because you could you could have these predefined zones. Well, uh, that's still in use today in some places. It didn't quite catch on as much as what people call the non-physical. the The idea behind non-physical is to put a uh, virtual station. Here, see, I'll take the, the peg out of this. The idea is to use a group of stations to come up with a correction value based on where you are. And, you know, that, that's putting like a virtual base where you are. It's not really. That's a little bit of a misnomer. 
your vector isn't really to this virtual location. That is the location of the value of your corrections. Uh, you still have the option of a hard vector to the nearest healthiest reference station. And actually, if you look at the reports on it when you get it, it is referring to a real station. So the uh, fear of the word virtual was just a lot of hoo-ha amongst different vendors. So it's producing a correction for that location. Now, you can work around that location, and it's sort of like reset the clock on single base, or reset the ruler on it. You can work around that, and it's being updated all the time, constantly. It's, uh, you work around that, you get too far away from it, it's going to calculate you a brand new one. No problem, you're still working on a hard vector to somewhere else. But like, whoop, like FKP, VRS works like this. You have a central processing center somewhere and the data from those reference stations streams in real time to it and it calculates this this uh, virtual location for you or this value of correction